The Mario & Luigi franchise is one of Nintendo's most comical and beloved properties. With the help of Alpha Dream Team, they have managed to consistently make several engaging titles that have brought immense satisfaction and joy to countless fans. Most notable of them all, Bowser's Inside Story. Many people have praised it for its incredibly innovative gameplay and exceptionally memorable soundtrack. And it's the latter that I plan to explore with all of you today. Join me as we soundtrack dip into Bowser's Inside Story. Hey, you're back for more, great to see ya. In case you missed it, this is the part two to a weekly series touching on the OST to Bowser's Inside Story. So if you haven't watched part one yet, please go ahead and do that. I'll leave a link to the playlist for this whole entire series in the description. If we're all caught up, there's no time to waste. Let's carry on with the soundtrack dip. Where last we left, the Mario Brothers find themselves traversing and combating their way through Bowser's innards, picking up some new skills and trinkets along the way. Eventually, they manage to wake up Bowser who has been in a peaceful comatose ever since his sucking incident. Probably could have phrased that better. They do this by quite literally striking his nerves. Starlo is able to communicate with him, but wisely keeps quiet about the fact that his lifelong rivals are currently roaming in his body. Bowser discovers that, unaware as to how, he's woken up in some sort of cave area. He starts to look for a way out as he does the wind is blowing at Cave Cape comes on. A really pleasantly composed tune to my surprise. The minute I saw this area, I had an idea of what I thought the music would sound like, but man was I thrown when I heard this one come on. It's way more upbeat than what I was expecting and has a really good rhythm to it. The instrumentation in this is incredibly varied. In the foreground for the melody, we got flutes, clarinets, synth, upright bass, and in the background, chime bells, drums, and you get a relatively prominent clacking from this kind of of wooden instrument it goes everything just has such a presence in this track the flute and clarinet harmony gives me such nice nostalgic feels for some reason i want to say it's maybe because it sounds like a ocarina from zelda or something i don't know it, it just comforts me a lot it's really strange i find the bridge to be very enjoyable as well it performs a bit of a similar move to the opening title screen music where it halts the original vibes that the melody set up and while to a new adventure kind of offset the tone this track manages to break the pace even more slowly down slightly and yet manages to make the track more enjoyable because of it. It swaps out most of the instruments as the timpani transitions into a collaboration between the organ and some beautifully orchestrated synths, all accompanying that magnificent violin. They give the violin such prominence, it's like it's having its own little spotlight moment. <laughs> really brought it out for this track, and so far these area themes are living up to the hype. But let me not get ahead of myself, we have a ways to go. Each of these tracks have an inside Bowser and outside Bowser version. The inside version is just as dope, having a more synthesized instrumentation. I'm curious as to what Yoko Shimomura's thought process was when designing these differing versions. The connection I make are that the versions of these songs outside of Bowser are more quote unquote real sounding, with the instruments sounding more like actual quote unquote real instruments, while the inside ones sound more synthesized, paralleling the surreal circumstances of being shrunk down into someone's inside. Whatever the case, these of course were perfectly fitted into the game setting. I want to say that I put this one under Mysterious Forest for now. It's a close call. I dig Mysterious Forest's violin moments too much I feel like, but I do think that Cave Cape's verses are a good amount better than it. It might surpass the forest if I hear it a little bit more and get used to it. We'll have to see. Uh, but anyways, back to the story. Bowser finds the cave's exit and immediately bumps into Fawful. I didn't touch on this track even though it played prior to this in the last episode. I just didn't want the title spoiling the big surprise reveal. But I will say, based on this music alone, I'm kind of already starting to mess with Fawful. You guys know my jazz obsession stood no chance with this one. It's got a sleazy... It's got a sleazy, smooth, kind of gambling vibe to it. The type of tune that's made to depict someone as untrustworthy, which Fafo probably fits. I don't know much about him, but I'm willing to bet that he is untrustworthy. See, look, he's making me gamble already. I'm not completely positive, but I think this track isn't a remaster from Superstar Saga. I think this is now his new standalone theme for this game, now that he's not with Kakleta. But in short, it's a very decent tune overall. Very good character theming. 
So anyways, Fawful explains that his ultimate plan is to take over the Mushroom Kingdom and even Bowser's Kingdom, which doesn't make Bowser very happy. Fawful sends his personal bouncer Midbus to essentially teach Bowser how to beat his ass. Here we hear Bowser's battling music, Showtime. I'm not quite as into this as I am with Okie Doki. I think it's fine, I just feel like I'm more into the upbeat tracks. This one isn't doing that much to stand out from the gloomier tracks so far. It doesn't speak to me really, I'm sorry, I don't really got much to say about it. Midbus leaves as he finds that Bowser isn't worthy enough to fight for him just yet, and Bowser decides to make his way to his kingdom to put a stop to Fawful's invasion. Trouncing around with Bowser's thick ass, you really really start to feel like an unstoppable force when you play as him. I think they did a great job of designing his gameplay sections. It's really fun to punch the living bejesus out of enemies. And he isn't even performing at his full potential yet, you can't even use his fire flame ability. I'm excited for what other things they're gonna do with him. As you journey on, you eventually get to a beach area. Beachside Dream is the next area track. This one is so uplifting. I love the steel drumming and fluting for the main melody. Very much gives that tropical feel. I've heard this one referred to as Plaque Beach. I don't know if that's the official title or not, to be honest. Hey, editing Michael cutting in just for a sec here to say that a fan of mine was very helpful and informed me that most of the themes actually have two different names. So the alternate name for this track is actually Plaque Beach. Thank you to Antonio is 2CN for letting me know that. Sorry if I butchered your name. But in terms of an area theme, in all honesty, I really wanted to be more into this track than I am. I think it's good and all, but it's not great. Sorry if that triggers any of you cult fans of this one. I know you're out there. I think it's just that I don't have nostalgia for this one. That's probably why it doesn't resonate with me as much. The melody is all right, I would say. It'll probably grow on me over time, but to be frank, I honestly think that I'll probably forget about this tomorrow. <laughs> Forgive my slander. Though if there is something that I can give this song credit for, it's this freaking vibraphone solo. Let's get more of that in this track because that, fire. It's got perfect theming and instrumentation. I fully praise them for being able to nail that, but just not really anything special about it in my opinion. It's kind of my least favorite one of the area themes so far. The Inside Bowser version is interesting though. The way they synthesize it makes it give off an 80s arcade game feel. It's the way that they synthesize the main melody. It just has like, a, for lack of a better term, a sort of buzziness to it. It's really interesting how they played around with it in this version. And even my favorite part still hits kind of nice too. Like they bring up the keyboard going I'm honestly more into this version because it's got such an intriguing sound to it, man. I think it's the first of the area themes where I prefer the inside version more. As we walk the beaches, Bowser comes across an interesting French character named Barack Monsieur. This guy is really fascinating. He seems like a genuine guy, but I wouldn't put it past him if he's maybe a secretly a bad guy. I don't know, I kinda like him. The music for him is very sweet sounding and jovial. This track makes me happy, so this guy makes me happy too. Who cares if he ends up being a villain later? This track contains some strong piano and winds, and a delightful harmony of marimba slash vibraphones. The melody is straightforward and yet incredibly catchy. I have a nice talk. It's simple yet effective. I know that it's not really Baroque Monsieur's theme. It's kind of just a the theme that pops up every time somebody else is having a conversation, but I like to think that it's his theme, honestly. It just fits. Brooke asked about broke ass Bowser, I almost said. I just called Bowser broke. <laughs> Cheap ass bitch Bowser. Broke asks Bowser to use his brute strength to pull him and the island he's on to shore. In return, he offers Bowser a valuable battle item. Mario and Luigi help by powering up his muscles in a cute little mini game. We get a decent song here, sort of a hyper techno jam. I think it's very exciting. With his muscles supercharged, Bowser successfully pulls in the island and our dear blocky friend Barack Monsieur. He grants Bowser the ability to suck enemies in battle, which leads to the heart of this game's gameplay fighting enemies with Mario, Luigi, and Bowser as a team. You inhale the enemies, and then Mario and Luigi are able to fight them as well. 
This is such an innovative move for this series. I can easily see why this game gets so much praise. Once he finishes training Bowser how to use his new suck ability, there's really gotta be a better way to say that. Bowser carries on with his prior objective, fighting all sorts of funny little guys in the beach, till he happens upon the sea pipe statue. Fawful, trying to slow Bowser down, brings it to life and it starts a new boss fight. I've seen the name for this one come up in comments. I don't know what the consensus are, but I think that people do really like this one. And I mean like, damn, this one kind of does go off a little bit, doesn't it? How invigorating can this get? The excitement is certainly high on this track. Just listen to this. Alleys to this one. I feel like I'm being taken on a journey or some kind of intense ride here. I love this about this track. I feel like I'm not crazy in love with it. I feel more connected to Okie Doki. Honestly, I feel like in a lot of ways they're very similar, both really energizing and instrumentally endowed. But Okie Doki is significantly catchier. I give the composers credit though, considering that they have to make around two solid minutes of an intense song with probably a good half of it having unique verses so that the song doesn't feel repetitive, especially while probably struggling with a boss isn't an easy task, I'm sure. And the fact that they made this so adventurous with its highs and lows, it's incredibly admirable. Solid track without a doubt. After Bowser and the brothers socket to the statue, the bros stumble into Toddsworth, who unfortunately isn't with Peach and wasn't even aware that she was in Bowser to begin with. As we progress, we gain access to more parts of Bowser's body. The way they designed the different areas, I can't say I understand it, but I do commend them for making it really fascinating to explore. Every part of the body looks the same, but different in their own ways. There's even a section where all the toads that Bowser swallowed up have their own safe haven, and went as far as to set up shops for you to buy items from. Why are you making me pay? I mean, like, don't you need me to get you out of this place? It cost how much? Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm just make sure that when we find a way out of this motherfucker, you don't hear about it at all! He's a little on edge because of the last battle that we had. <laughs> Two, please. The brothers find the source of Bowser's fire erectile dysfunction and take care of it. Now we're really about to have fun with Bowser. Brock Monsieur comes back with his pet to show you some more of Bowser's skill set. You can use your shell to block attacks from above or dodge, and you can hit them with the mixtape. Later on as you progress through the story, you can even start using some of Bowser's minions as special attack items. I guess it kind of makes sense that Bowser would objectify his minions. It's just so amazing how they designed the moves for him. It makes playing as Bowser such a blast. By the way, looking through the gameplay footage, I, I totally forgot to give my thoughts on the inside version of the Mysterious Forest song, so let me do that now. I think they were really experimental when making this one, if nothing else. It goes everywhere with its style. It's quite a bit similar to the inside version of the beach song, in that it has the arcade feel to it, but every verse is just jumping from this sort of rough and thumpy beat to a more chill and zen vibe. It's honestly pretty good, honestly. I wouldn't say it's better than the outside version, but it's pretty close. Anyways, we go quite a ways here without anything too big happening, so I'll kind of give the Cliff Notes version here. Bowser's minions bring him a cannon that they plan to shoot at his kingdom to stop Fawful's reign. But he has to get a bonsai bullet by eating the carrot, blah, blah, blah. He gets the bullet, shoots it at the castle, but Fawful's bouncer avoids it by flying the castle out of the way and onto Bowser. This leaves Bowser in critical condition, and so the Mario Brothers play a couple mini games to save his life, turning Bowser into Giga Bowser. I guess giant Bowser, a little more lame sounding, I won't lie to you. This is so crazy. You have to start holding the DS sideways to play these parts. And y'all know that with my Rhythm Heaven experience, I would slay this no problem. And this track is, wow, it's really something, man. It's a more souped up version of the established Bowser theme from the beginning. The organs swell, the timpanies slam, everything is just put into maximum overdrive. It is unreal. 
I think this is not hitting on the same level as Okie Doki. I'm sorry, I'm just like hella obsessed with that track. But it is better than Showtime, and I think maybe just slightly less good than Tough Guy. In this battle, you have to fight against Bowser's castle and minions. It is a very engaging battle, and it's extremely empowering. After he beats the shit out of his own castle, it runs away and Bowser returns to normal size. Starlo informs Bowser that he'll only be able to go big like that again in dire circumstances. And I think that seems like a good cutoff point for this episode. I'm enjoying this OST quite a bit. Really good recommendation. I feel like I would have picked this up eventually, but uh, since you guys kind of pushed me into it, I really do appreciate it because I was fi I'm finding a lot of good songs that I like in this. Tell me in the comments below, guys, what your favorite song from this game is. If I talked about it already, tell me if you guys agree or disagree with my opinions on them. And I hope to see you guys next week for more Bowser's Inside Story. Leave a like on this video, touch that ding dong to get notified, and I will see you guys that.